Hi, welcome to Kinetics Part 5. My name is Dr. English. Today we're going to be talking about catalysts and entropy. Specifically, we're going to look at the effect of catalyst on activation energy, catalyst and potential energy diagrams, spontaneous reactions, two factors that determine spontaneity, and a little bit of practice at the end. So let's talk about the effect of a catalyst on activation energy. The catalyst does not change the potential energy of the reactants and the potential energy of the products. So one thing they have to realize is that those two things are not going to be affected by a catalyst. Therefore, the delta H of the reaction, the heat of reaction, does not change. And this is extremely important to realize. The catalyst simply lowers the activation energy, which can be represented symbolically by this E sub A, and increases the rate of the reaction. So here with this diagram, we see that this solid line right here is the reaction pathway without the catalyst. But if I was to switch up the color, what the catalyst is going to do is lower that activation energy. So we're basically going to see a smaller bumped here. So let's look at this diagram right here. For the following reaction, draw in a line showing that a catalyst has been added. So initially, right here at the very beginning of our reaction, we have the potential energy, potential energy of our reactants. And at the end of the reaction, we have the potential energy, potential energy of our products. And the difference between these two, right here to right here, is our delta H. This is our heat of the reaction. And that can't be touched by a catalyst. Initially, when we look at this, we have an initial activation energy that goes all the way to the top. It goes from 50 to 250. What a catalyst is going to do is basically lower that activation energy. So when you draw on a line, you want to start at the same level as your potential energy of your reactants, follow it up, go up with a little bit of a bump just to show that it's decreased, and then go back down and follow through. So this black line right here is our activation energy without a catalyst. This red line right here is our activation added with a catalyst. So it's not like you're gonna go draw a line directly from the potential energy of your reactants to the potential energy of the products. You still will have a little bit of activation energy, but the whole purpose of that catalyst is to lower the activation energy. Let's do the same thing to this diagram. For the following reaction, draw on a line showing that a catalyst has been added. So here we are, starting at the beginning with A plus B, potential energy of our reactants. We'll get to C plus D, the potential energy of our products. The black line, of course, is representing an uncatalyzed reaction. So what we want to do here is go up a little bit to show that the activation energy has decreased, go down, and meet that final line where the potential energy of the products is. So if I was to draw this in, I'd say my initial activation energy goes from here all the way to the top of the activated complex. But when I draw in my new line to basically represent how much activation energy I'm putting in with a catalyst, it's only going up to this point right here to the top of the uh, blue line right here, the new line of the activated complex, basically. So all the catalyst does is lower the activation energy. It's not going to touch your delta H. It's not going to touch the potential energy of your reactants nor your products. Now let's talk about spontaneous reactions. A spontaneous reaction happens on its own without any outside intervention. Spontaneous does not necessarily mean fast or instantaneous. It could in some situations be spontaneous, as in quickly, or it could mean something like a, a very slow nuclear decay that's still going to happen spontaneously, but it takes a much longer period of time. Spontaneous reactions depend on the balance between two fundamental tendencies in nature. The first is towards a lower, more stable energy state. In other words, low or decreasing enthalpy. Also towards increasing randomness or disorder, which we can also call entropy. So a high or increasing entropy. So we have to look at these two different factors to determine whether or not a reaction will be spontaneous. The first factor is the energy factor or H 
otherwise known as enthalpy. And you can differentiate between entropy and enthalpy because enthalpy has an H in it for heat. Systems tend to move from higher to lower energy states. Axothermic reactions move towards a lower energy state because some of the energy contained in the reactants is released. The products have less potential energy than the reactants, therefore it's an exothermic reaction. Spontaneous reactions have a tendency to go towards lower energy levels. So when you're looking for a potential energy diagram that represents a spontaneous reaction, you want to see that the potential energy of the reactants is higher than the potential energy of the products. And ultimately here that your delta H here is going to be negative. That energy, energy is released. Energy is released. So you're looking for an exothermic reaction when we talk about this first factor. The other factor is the disorder factor, which is represented uh, symbolically by an S for entropy. And entropy is a measure of the disorder, randomness, or lack of organization of a system. For many people, this is like a messy bedroom. You might try to clean it up, but over time, it will ultimately go back to a state of chaos and disorder. But you'll know where everything is, of course. The greater the disorder, the higher the entropy. Systems tend to move towards states of higher disorder or randomness. So example, again, we come back to potentially your bedroom. No matter how hard you try to clean it up, it always goes back to being utter chaos. Entropy and particle model diagrams of states of matter. So we could say solid is represented by these little circles right here. This has low entropy. It's very organized. It's together. There's maybe a pattern behind it but this represents a solid, so that's gonna be low entropy. If we put energy in, we'll get to a liquid and the particles get a little bit farther away from each other. And as they move farther away from each other, there's more possibilities of different states. So we say that this has a higher entropy. And then finally, a gas is the state with the highest entropy. So I might represent a couple of red circles right here, but they're much farther away from each other and even potentially out of the box. So a solid is going to have the lowest entropy level while gases will have the highest entropy level. Now what I'd like you to do is stop, read over the question, see if you can answer it, and then come back and check your work. Welcome back. Which statement best describes how a catalyst increases the rate of a reaction? Let's look at our four answers. The catalyst provides an alternate reaction pathway with a higher activation energy, the catalyst provides an alternate reaction pathway with a lower activation energy. The catalyst provides the same reaction pathway with a higher activation energy. And the catalyst provides the same reaction pathway with a lower activation energy. So the first thing that we need to look at is, are we going with an alternate reaction pathway or the same reaction pathway? Now we know that when we're drawing these potential energy diagrams represented with a catalyst, they both start with the same amount of potential energy of reactants and the same amount of potential energy of products, but it's a different pathway as you add in the catalyst. So we're looking for the wording that says alternate reaction pathway. So these two are a possibility. This one's out and this one's out. If we look at the second half of the question, it says with a higher activation energy or with a lower activation energy. If you chose the one with lower activation energy, you're right because we're looking at an alternate reaction pathway, but ultimately what we're trying to do when we add a catalyst is lower that activation energy. Let's look at another problem. Again, I'd like you to stop, read over the question, choose your answer, come back and check your work. Welcome back. Base your answer on the potential energy diagram below, which represents the reaction. Which numbered interval will change with the addition of a catalyst to a system? So we have one, two, three, and four. Well, one here, right here, this area right here, that's representing the potential energy of your reactants. And four is representing the potential energy of our products, potential energy of our products. So those two are out, and three is representing your delta H, the difference between the potential energy of the products and the reactants. Only two, 
represents our activation energy. And we know if we were to add in a catalyst to this, we'd start at the potential energy of the reactants, we'd go up, we'd lower the activation energy a little bit, and finally come out at the potential energy of the products. So two is the correct choice for this particular question. Let's look at another one. Stop, read the question, come back. Which reaction results in an increase, an increase in the entropy or spontaneity of the system? So here we have four different chemical equations to look at. Notice that they're all water-based. Uh, we have the first two going through phase change, the next one, which is the electrolysis of water, and the last one, which is the formation of water. So we have water as a gas going to water as a liquid. Well, that's becoming more organized. So more organized, less entropy. So we're gonna put less entropy because it's going to a more organized state. Gas to a solid, nope, that's gonna definitely have less entropy. So B is out. Then we have two moles of water forming two moles of hydrogen gas and one mole of oxygen gas. Now they're all the same state, gas, gas, and gas. But this is an increase in entropy because even though they're all the same state, we're going from two moles of water to three moles of substances. So we're increasing the different types of arrangements that we can have. Let's consider C as a distinct possibility, but let's go on and look at D. Two moles of hydrogen, one mole of oxygen forming two moles of liquid water. Again, we are definitely having a decrease in entropy, so less entropy, more organized. C is definitely the correct answer here. Let's look at the last question. Given the change of phase, CO2 gas to CO2 solid. So we're going from less organized to more organized, and it's all dependent here on the phase. As CO2 gas changes into CO2 solid, the entropy of the system is going to decrease. It's going to become much more organized. If it was going from a solid to a gas, then the entropy would have increased and remains the same is definitely not an option here. So what did you learn? We looked at the effect of catalysts on activation energy. We talked about catalysts and potential energy diagrams. We talked about spontaneous reactions. We looked at two factors that determine spontaneity and then finally we did a little bit of practice at the end. Need more help? Feel free to contact me. Have a great day.